Hey, what's up guys, Soldier Knows Best here. So I have the new iPad OS running on my iPad Pro, and I'm about to show you how you can connect a Bluetooth mouse to be able to control iOS now. And so this is not a third party workaround. Apple has built this into the software. So let me show you how to set it up. So you just need to go into settings and then go down to accessibility. And then you wanna to go to touch. And then you wanna to go to assistive touch and then toggle that on. And then now you can go to pointing devices and go to Bluetooth devices and just make sure that your mouse is in pairing mode and then tap on that. And then now hit pair and boom, you're set to go. So now you have this cursor that you can move around the screen. You can scroll up and down and you can also just uh, left click onto things and you can go back here to this menu. Now you do have this little thing that pops up on the bottom. This is actually a menu to give you some controls um, over the operating system, but you can turn this off by going to uh, always show menu, turn that off and boom, that is gone. So um, by default, I think some of the buttons that are customized on here is that this button at the top will take me home and then right click will bring up that menu that I just closed. And from this menu, you have a bunch of different things that you, that you can do. You can go in here and uh, be able to turn the volume up and down, show you how that works. And then you can hit more and you can shake your phone, your iPad without having to pick it up. So you have a lot of stuff that you can do. So anyway, I'm gonna hit the home button to get out of that. And now let me go back into the settings and show you that you can customize the different uh, mouse keys. So I'm gonna go back to pointing devices. I'm gonna hit the name of my mouse. And now some mice have a bunch of different buttons. So this particular mouse has two buttons on the left hand side. Uh, so those are button four and five. So now you can tap on any one of these buttons to customize it, but I'm gonna tap on button four. And I think right now I have it set up to pull down my notifications. So I can just tap on it. Boom, there are my notifications. So now when you tap on it again, it doesn't uh, close it up. So you actually have to hit the home button to get back. But yeah, you have a bunch of different things that you can uh, assign to these buttons to really get more control. Now, as far as navigating the OS, you can just click and hold on the screen and then swipe over, just like you would do with your finger, like that. You can go all the way back. Then also you can slide down from the top to be able to uh, bring down your controls there. And also you can pull down that notification shade like that. And also to go home, you can swipe up. Let me show you how that works. You can swipe up from the bottom just like you normally would. And so I can still double tap on the home button to bring up all of my different apps. That still works. Okay, so now let's see how this works in other apps like Safari. And so it doesn't allow you to use the scroll wheel, but you can grab and hold and go up and down. And then also you can tap on the search box and then now you can click on each one of the letters if you wanted to. And let me see how far it takes for a soldier knows best. All right, there we go. <laughs> That's mine hit the channel. And so it doesn't have full support, right? You can't use the scroll wheel, nothing like that, but you can get things done with this if you really wanted to. Now let's take a look at a drawing app and let me open this up and change the color. And yeah, it works. So if you don't have an Apple Pencil or if you don't have an iPad that supports one, you can still use your mouse and do things like this. So yeah, this is cool. All right, now to see how this works in a game. So this is a Hungry Dragon. It's a very simple game, it doesn't have a lot of controls. You actually just normally place your finger on the screen and then move up and down and around. Um, so we'll see if that works with the mouse. I'm assuming it will. Yep, it does. So I just have to click and hold and then now turn into uh, Game of Thrones here. <laughs> Spoiler alert if you didn't watch the last season. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so this works. It's a very simple game, fun game. And this is how it works with my finger as I was mentioning before. Um, but yeah, you can get the job done with the mouse on this one. But now let's try to do something more complicated like Fortnite. Okay, so I have Fortnite loaded up here. And one of the issues that I found is that you just can't just move your mouse around normally. Again, you have to actually mimic you tapping and holding on the screen. Okay, so the issue is that when you're tapping and holding on the screen, it acts like you want to uh, attack sometimes. So you can't just like fluidly run around. So yeah, I think games like this, kind of more complicated games that have a lot of different things that you can do on the screen aren't gonna work well. And so this will be the case until developers fully accept mouse support into their games. But then at the same time, that would probably give advantages to people who have a mouse connected to the iPad versus people who are just using the touch screen. But overall, I think that we're still not gonna get the full capabilities of being able to use a mouse with the iPad until Apple really fully incorporates it inside of the operating system. So anyway, guys, leave your comment down below. Let me know what you think about this video and also this new support for iOS 13. And also make sure you do subscribe to me on YouTube and hit that notification bell and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. But like always, I do wanna thank you for watching this video and I will catch you later. Peace.